Today, we will learn how to bond a lithium disilicate crown. Our armamentarium for preparing the crown includes a silane primer and a hydrofluoric acid etchant. The first step is to etch the inside of the crown for 20 to 60 seconds with either 5 or 9% hydrofluoric acid. Note that the lab may have already performed this step for you, and I suggest contacting them to verify. Etching lithium disilicate selectively dissolves the glass component, which increases micromechanical retention. The next step is to either apply one or two coats of a silane primer. Silane is a molecule that binds on one end the glass and lithium disilicate into the cement in the other. Silane should be applied to the crown before trying because it makes the surface of the crown hydrophobic and protects it from saliva and blood contamination during trying. Before final cementation, the crown is tried in. Complete seating of the crown and accuracy of the margins are examined by probing the interface between the tooth and the restoration with an explorer. Contacts are verified, and if they are deficient, the crown is taken to the lab for addition porcelain. Occlusion is examined, and the crown is then cleaned with water. The tooth is now prepared for bonding using a total etch adhesive technique. The tooth is etched for 15 seconds with 37% phosphoric acid. It is then rinsed and lightly air dried without desiccating the dentin. A one bottle fifth generation adhesive is applied to the tooth surface. The adhesive is then air dispersed ensuring that there is not pooling of the adhesive, particularly at the margin that would prevent the crown from seeding. The adhesive is then light cured for 20 seconds on both the facial and lingual surfaces. A total etch resin cement is used for bonding. The base and catalyst are mixed and the crown is loaded with cement. The crown is seated and pressure is applied to ensure complete seating of the crown. Gross excess cement is then removed gently with a microbrush. The cement is tack cured for 3 seconds in order to more easily clean the cement. Excess cement is then cleaned with an explorer or scaler. Interproximal cement is removed with floss. If floss cannot be passed, either a polishing strip or floss threader can be used to break contact. In order to prevent this problem, Teflon tape can be placed on the adjacent teeth while bonding the crown. A final cure of the cement is then performed for 60 seconds on the facial and lingual of the crown. Following cementation, the occlusion is adjusted. The patient is asked to bite in maximum intercuspation and excursive movements with articulating paper. Excess markings are first adjusted with a fine diamond with water cooling. Polishing of the restoration is then performed to reduce opposing enamel wear, smooth any micro cracks produced from the diamond, and smooth the restoration for patient comfort. Thank you for watching this video.